Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And to all of my returning OGs, what's up, y'all? So welcome to February 2020, yeah? A very, very happy birthday to all my Aquarians out there. And I also want to wish a happy birthday to the February Pisceans. We will be moving into your season next, yes? So um, with that said, I do want to mention, first of all, I want to say that this is the intro and you will find a, um, a timestamp pinned in the comments section that will get you straight to the reading. So if you're watching multiple readings and you don't want to listen to the intro over and over again, you can use that timestamp. I do recommend, however, that everybody listen to the intro at least once because there is some information that you may really need or may be privy to, may want to be privy to, that you would miss had you not listened to the intro. Yeah. So with this being Aquarius season, I do want to mention that the reading for Aquarius could very well be a collective energy, a collective reading. However, it is intended to be for those who are looking for guidance guidance for the sign of Aquarius because we are in that season. I do feel like this could be a reading for you generally. So maybe you might want to watch that reading just to see how it applies to you and what it could mean for your life moving through Aquarius season, just like I did with Capricorn last month, um, even though I did mention that maybe I wanted to do a separate reading so that your readings don't get hijacked with collective energy. Hi <laughs> um, it didn't necessarily happen that way this month. I'll see. Um, but if you guys if you guys find that you know you might want an actual reading please let me know for the month of, or for the season that we're moving in i would love to know i'd love to hear that from you yeah um okay so these these readings are general and they are timeless so because they're general readings um you know just take what resonates everything is not going to resonate for everyone and this may not even be the reason for you if if you're hearing listening to this and it's just not fitting it's not making sense then please don't try and fit anything into your life that doesn't belong there naturally okay and also keep in mind that this is a general reading i'm channeling for thousands of people so um you know not everything is going to necessarily resonate with you all the time okay so just keep that in mind also these readings are timeless so just because it is dated for the month of february and i'm channeling energies for the messages for the month of february for you it doesn't mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you during the month of february this could be messages that come forward to you that spirit wants you to know at this time but it's not something that doesn't actually manifest or happen for some time down the road okay so just keep that in mind i am available for private readings all the information is found in the description box below this video um, you can also find me on uh, social media. I'm on Facebook at Divine Conversations 2711. I'm also on Instagram at Divine underscore Conversations. I do welcome you to reach out to me there. However, if you are looking to book a personal reading, I do not recommend that you use Facebook. Um, I don't even really recommend that you use Instagram. However, Instagram is a more viable option. I am able to get to the messages more quickly, but my dm situation is just full of all kinds of messages so there's still a possibility that i might miss your inquiry and with that said even if you were to say to reach out on instagram for a personal reading i'm still going to defer you back to email so if you would like to get a personal reading with me check the description box below my email can be found there along with all of the readings that i offer their description and their prices and then email me directly. My email address is divineconversations2711 at gmail.com. But again, that can be found in the description box. Again, I am going to, even if you were to reach out on Instagram, I am still going to defer to your email address because I would at least need your email address to send you an invoice for the reading. So you're better off just skipping a step and emailing me, emailing me directly and I'll get you set up for a personal reading. Yeah? Cool. So the Oracle deck that we're using for this month is the Queen of the Moon Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. I really, really enjoyed using this this um, this deck this month. Um, it was a deck that was provided by a viewer. Thank you so much for sending this in. I really appreciate it. For those of you that are interested in donating Oracle decks or Tarot decks that you would like to see used on the channel, I do have a PO box that the information for that can be found in the description box as well. Um, if you are going to send a tarot or oracle deck, you might just want to email me really quick and really and check in to see if I have that deck yet, um, so that you know we're not you're not kind of wasting money sending a repeat deck. Okay, um, but the one thing I want to say about this deck is that 
uh, of this Oracle deck is that the author speaks in first person kind of often. So just keep that in mind when I'm saying, when I'm reading through the, the, the definition on the, in the book and I'm speaking, I'm saying things like I, it's coming from the perspective of the author herself. Okay. It's not me speaking personally. It's the author and her narrative. It's sometimes it's in the first person, but it's great. I mean, it still worked really well. The messages were beautiful for that. So I'm excited to, for you to guys, for you guys to see them. And for those of you that are new to the channel and are wondering, I'm not the type of reader that's looking into the situation to be nosy. My intention with these readings here is to bring forward the best messages for you that you need to hear at this time so that you can make a better decision for your life moving forward so that you can have a greater opportunity to be more discerning for your life and for the where you want to go and potentially what could be coming on down the pipeline for you. If at any moment you find that the, something is resonating with you and you don't quite like the way that sounds, you don't want to continue manifesting with that or manifesting that, you have the opportunity to change that manifestation by changing your thought process, then changing your beliefs and changing your alignment to the situation, okay? So just keep in mind, for those of you that are here trying to snoop, trying to get into people's minds, thinking that I'm trying to get into somebody's head, I'm not your guy, all right? There are plenty of people that are out here that may be doing that, but I'm not here for that. Also understand that I do not base my channelings on love specifically. If love comes out, then love comes out. I am not resistant to that. However, if you're looking for specific love readings, then this is probably not the, the channel for you. I do have moments where I will do uh, you know, a love live session here or there, but ultimately the focus of my channel or the focus of Divine Conversation is to bring you greater guidance and understanding about, well, to bring you greater guidance, of, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> to bring you greater understanding about what is going on in your life, the energies that are surrounding you, and then bringing you guidance in, in terms of handling those energies and making the best decisions for yourselves. Yes? Okay, I believe that's it. So without further ado, let's get to it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Mwah. Hey there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your reading for February 2020. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, Saggy, my Sagittarius, let's get into this for you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Your pre-shuffle here is very good, Sag, all right? Um, even though in the overall energy, you do have the Eight of Swords. However, with everything else that's coming through here, I mean, you have four cards in your pre-shuffle, you know, minus the, the overall energy here in the Eight of Swords. But these four cards that have come out are all major arcana. You have the world, the Wheel of Fortune, the Emperor, and Justice. Okay, so even though you have that Eight of Swords energy in the overall of this pre-shuffle energy, the fact that it's there actually doesn't really feel so bad. What it kind of feels like here is, for the most part, there is an element of a jailbreak or a, a freeing yourself from some sort of mental prison. And this is something that we have been talking about for you, Sagittarius, here on my channel since August of 20, 2019, okay? And I, I mean, I really shouldn't be surprised at this point. I've been doing this for over two years now. But the consistency with which some of these readings have been coming through month to month to month, um, especially for you, Sag, has been really quite interesting and really quite fun to, to watch develop for you. The only other one that I can really recall off the top of my head out of the Zodiac that has been so consistent over these last six to eight months has been Virgo. Okay, so this is this is really beautiful. So what is this here for you? What I'm picking up on, Sag, is there is a massive change for you in terms of completing some cycles here that you have been burdened by and challenged by for a very long time. You have the world with the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so by you taking your power back with the Emperor energy, um, you are in fact completing a major cycle and changing your karmic destiny in terms of moving forward with your life. And that's absolutely bringing forward. Oh, that's why my light's not on. That's absolutely bringing forward an energy of greater justice into your life. Now, here's the small percentage of, of energy that I'm getting from this eight of swords energy. That's not necessarily referring to a jailbreak. There is, I feel like there is for, 
maybe a small number of you or for whomever is resonating with this, maybe on a small level, I want to even say insignificant or minuscule level um, in relation to the massive closing out of cycles here in the overarching energy for you. But there is a little bit of energy of maybe apprehension. Um, as I was pulling this pre-shuffle here, um, Justice and the Emperor actually fell out face down. The world and the Wheel of Fortune fell out face up. And as I was trying to turn over these last two cards, one of them fell off the table and I had to go pick it up off the floor. And it was, in fact, the Emperor. So for some of you, I feel like there is a little bit of fear or apprehension in the realm of taking your power back. And for some of you, this feels like an energy of um, you being worried uh, about potential aftermath or the um the fallout that would come from you asserting yourself taking your taking your power back breaking yourself free from sort of some sort of jail whether figuratively or physically um, mental prison even some of the things that have been holding you back for a long time I, but with that said, with the massive energy here, with all of this, four, the, all four of these major arcana cards, I really do feel like that level of apprehension or maybe even a slight twinge of fear is really quite minuscule to the rest of the overarching energies for you. All right, Saj? But ultimately, this is good. And if you are finding yourself a little bit scared or apprehensive or whatnot in terms of really fully stepping into your true power and really fully being the master of your own domain i would recommend that you look at that from a the point of view of uh, a lesson or training you know even like strength training what's this the five of swords um you know what i'm not even going to talk about that five of swords uh Oh, well, no, I will say, okay, the Five of Swords is representing, like, saying, like, don't allow, don't allow yourself to be sabotaged or don't, uh, don't sabotage yourself. Like, stay strong, stay true in your power. You might want to pick, ooh, you might want to pick your battles wisely. Well, look, there you are. <laughs> there you are, Sag. Okay, Temperance, but also Temperance is about balance, patience, and alchemy. And there's Justice at the bottom of the deck again, maybe even the Ace of Wands now inspiration all right be patient with yourself um make sure to focus on remaining as balanced and harmonious within as you possibly can and all really should continue to go well for you yes yeah, Saj. great so why don't we get into the rest of this here and see what here and see what else we have for you hi spirit Please make me a clear channel for all Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of February 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Sagittarian, five shuffles for you. Here we go. One. Two for Massages, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter for the month of January, February, excuse me, for the month of February 2020. Three. Four. And last but not least, five. All right, Sag, let's get into this here for you. All right. Overall energy for you, Sagittarius. We do have the Six of Cups. Okay. So this could, I mean, officially this, I mean, this really, for the most part, this is a, a soulmate card. Um, but for you, Sag, I really do feel like this is hearkening back to your past. And I remember when I first did that reading for you back in August of 2020, 2019, um, in which was the, the beginning of this narrative that we've been talking about over the last eight months. Um, you know, you were dealing with a lot of issues from your past, a lot of issues from your childhood. This could even be a situation in which you were dealing with past life circumstances that are coming up to the surface in order to be healed um, and lessons to be closed out from that. 
that's what I'm feeling the most for you here. But what I'm getting with this Six of Cups energy is there's a sense of peace that you're coming to terms with in terms of your past. Okay, I just, I feel like there's a peaceful energy here. I feel like you're either in an energy or you're approaching an energy in which you can look back on the past, recognize the lessons learned through all of that pain and turmoil and strife that you dealt with and, and, and be at peace with it. Underneath the Six of Cups, you have the Hierophant, and that is the energy of learning, okay? The, the, the Hierophant does, you know, represent institutions and whatnot, whatever, but it also represents teaching and learning. So there you go. There's that, left, there's that energy of being able to look back on your past and say, wow, I really learned a whole lot from that, and actually I'm quite grateful for it. And I do feel like whatever it is that you've learned and integrated from all of this has really brought you a greater sense of spiritual awareness, beautiful underneath the hierophant you've got the king of pentacles well look at you sag you really have grown up and i'm not to say, that's not to say that any of you were really in too much of a of a childish or um a, a adolescent or or there's a specific word that i'm looking for whatever it's not like you've really been that childish even though you know saggies tend to be super playful and whatnot but with this king of pentacles energy here it, i really feel like you either have grown into or you are you are in the process of really growing into a greater sense of who you are and like really growing into your own okay underneath the king of pentacles is the five of pentacles now that's interesting but there is that slight sense of inadequacy or feelings of inadequacy but i really what i really feel like here sag is maybe for some of you in the, over the month of february or for whenever this reading resonates for you you're really going to be facing this five of pentacles energy or this sense of inadequacy um <clears throat> or lack of abundance of poverty whatnot whatever from the position of this king of pentacles energy so it's like you've come into the position where you can finally look at the past or look at feelings that you hold or beliefs that you hold that make you feel that you are inadequate not enough but not whatever but you're standing in this king of pentacles energy being able to look at that and recognize it as an illusion because you are in fact abundant well manifested in control okay beautiful sag all right let's get into the rest of your reading here first half second half of your reading you could look at this as the first half second half of your month but take it as it resonates for you yeah first set of surrounding energies for you sag in the first half of your reading you have the ten of swords excellent beautiful so right off the bat right out the gate you are in an energy of completing some really tough I'm hearing narcissistic cycles. It could be cycles in which you were ex expressing narcissistic tendencies or you were in a cycle where you were attracting individuals that expressed that narcissistic energy or whatnot, whatever. But ultimately, the worst is behind you and the worst is behind you and you're ready to move forward from it. From, from it. it. It may even be an energy where you're starting to gear up. You're packing up your stuff to get up and get ready and to get up and go, which is beautiful. I don't really feel a lot of resistance here for you. I just feel like you're ready. You're ready to move on. You're ready to put the past behind you. You're ready to start a new life. Ten of Swords is coupled with the Magician. Yes, sir, Sag. So there you go. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. All right, you are ready to manifest something new. This is literally the energy that I was feeling of you being ready to put this behind you and create something new and better for yourself. And you're putting your, I just heard you're putting yourself in the position to do so. That is fantastic. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Sag, in the first half of your reading. The sun, the sun beautiful. Not only is the sun of, not only is the sun an omen of good things to come, but for you specifically, Sag, I really feel like the sun is representing the illumination, the awareness that you are either that you have stepped into or that you are actively stepping into. And that's beautiful. And, and it's like what I'm feeling for you is as you stand in this energy of awareness that the sun represents for you, it's like the whole world is open to you. Like there are so many possibilities for you now that you're in the process of putting this energy of lack mentali mentality behind you. It's like, it's literally like you are a kid in a candy store or like the world is your oyster. It's, it's, that's great. This even could be a situation, Sag, where as you put these energies of lack mentality behind you, brand new doors 
or pathways open up to you that maybe you once thought were never ever going to be possible for you okay and that is directly related to this lack mentality energy once you start to believe in yourself once you start to believe in your own worth and that you are capable of damn near anything so many other possibilities that were once closed off to you open up because they were closed off to you because of your disbelief beautiful <clears throat> the sun is coupled with the six of pentacles and to be honest, the Six of Pentacles, yes, it does represent reciprocity, giving giving back to others and whatnot, whatever. But I feel like with this sun energy specifically, the Six of Pentacles is an energy of you ready and willing to give back to yourself. Sagittarians tend to be very giving and loving individuals. They often can can slip into a certain martyrdom syndrome, a certain level of martyrdom even if they didn't necessarily intend to, I kind of, maybe this is something specific for whomever this is resonating for, but it's like, I'm feeling an energy of somehow, some way you end up slipping into a martyr situation. It's like, how the hell did I get here? Well, it's that you, that's your natural loving nature that kind of helped you get there, but it was your lack of awareness around that, that helped you slip into those energies unbeknownst to yourself, at least on a conscious level. But now there's enough awareness for you to be able to give back to yourself what you, I guess, so desperately or so, so strongly re desired someone else or external circumstances to give to you. It's like you're, liver you're literally giving yourself this reciprocity that you so desperately i guess for lack of a better term needed or wanted okay your challenge in the first half of your reading here sag you have the nine of swords okay well there is that fear that apprehension that i've the worrisome energy that i was kind of picking up on with the eight of swords here but to be quite honest you have this sun shining on your energy right now so it's really this lack mentality or the energies of moving out of this lack mentality that it's causing that's drumming up this fear. Um, however, I do see you kind of juxtapositioned between the nine of swords and the 10 of swords with this magician energy, even though you might be experiencing this energy of fear, fear of the unknown, the what ifs, maybe even like cringe worthy moments when you look back on the past, whatnot, whatever. I really still feel like you are actively taking the role of pulling yourself out of this nine of swords energy with this magician energy and bringing it all to completion with the 10 of swords. Okay. The nine of swords is coupled with the four of pentacles. There you go. This is an energy of letting go. Typically, this could be an energy of holding on too tightly. But your challenge here is to recognize the fears, recognize the apprehension, and really start to consciously allow yourself to pry your fingers off of whatever it is you've been holding on to, to dear life for in order for, in, in, in terms of like for security reasons, sure, but it was a, not a healthy way of finding security within yourself. So the challenge here is to really let go of the fears, let go of the anxieties, let go of what it is you've been holding on to for for security reasons. Like you could call this even your security blanket, right? But with this four, with this king of pentacles up here in the, your overall energy, you're either in this king of pentacles energy or you're moving well on well on your way into moving into this energy of security represented by the king of pentacles. Beautiful, Sag. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading. You have the Seven of Wands. Boundaries. There you go. And you've learned quite a bit about what the best or most optimal boundaries would be for yourself. So your closing message or potential outcome is you either finding and learning about this or putting this, 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 this practice of brand new boundaries into place for yourself. Seven of Wands is coupled with, there you go, the Hanged Man change in perspective enlightenment and what however you have been stuck or perceived to have been stuck ultimately it served a purpose why because it brought you a greater sense of awareness it has broadened your horizons it has primed you to be in this energy of the sun shining with illumination all around you so yes, Sag, you can look back on the past, Six of Cups, all, at all of the things that you've learned with the Hierophant and say, you know what? It might have sucked. It might have been shitty, but damn it, it was worth it. 
because I am a bigger, badder, better version of myself than I have ever been in the past. And you should, and, and, and I highly recommend that you practice gratitude in terms of that specifically, because it ultimately did serve a purpose in your life. Beautiful. Getting into the second half of your reading here, Sag, first set of surrounding energies for you, we have, ha ha, there's that wheel of fortune again, changing karmic destiny completely changing your life and changing the tra trajectory and changing what it is that you move forward towards and what you experience in the future. Wheel of Fortune is coupled with, oh, ooh, the Two of Cups. Okay, so either this could be, this change is directly related to, like your karmic change is directly related to the balance of masculine and feminine energy within you, or there could be a circumstance or situation in which this karmic change or this change in karmic destiny brings you some sort of partnership, some sort of soulmate connection, which is also something that is representative here or represented here by the Six of Cups. You really could be moving into an energy of being ready, willing, and able to settle down, to make some sort of commitment to someone, or at least if, that, if there is someone specifically on your mind, or being in the position to align with a soulmate or counterpart that resonates with you. But in order for you to get that, in order for you to get to that, or in order for you to be in the right alignment to attract something like that, you needed to clear out all of this sense of lack mentality with this five of pentacles. Your confidence brings you assured success is what I just heard. Your, your, your strength, your stability, your, your desire to work hard and commit. Beautiful. Okay, second set of surrounding energies for you, Sag, in the second half of your reading, you have, okay, well, the devil. You know, the devil is, is, is representing fear. I just, especially with it being right under the sun here, I feel like the devil's hold or the, the grasp that the devil has had on you is being fully exposed for what it truly is. And this is giving you an opportunity to release yourself from the devil's clutches. The devil is coupled with the three of swords. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So this is, this is really, I, what I, especially with, I was feeling like this, this devil is the, the, the devilish circumstances, whether that be relationships or whatever that is for you, you're starting to recognize what happened or why things happened the way they did, or you're starting to recognize the true source, the true source of your heartbreak, the pain that you've experienced in the past. It's more than just people are shitty or I did X, Y, and Z, which was pretty shitty. No, there is a deeper meaning behind it. And I really do feel like, again, especially since this is coming out right underneath the sun, I really do feel like the true source of whatever heartbreak you've experienced in your life is coming to light, is being exposed, is being understood. Which again, which, which is only deepening the lessons of what you've learned here with the Hierophant, okay? Excellent, Saji. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, you have the, there's that Eight of Swords. Again, breaking free from the devil's grasp, but also from this sort of mental prison. There is a really strong message here where some of you have been in this holding pattern of five of pentacles or lack mentality because you weren't consciously aware of where the true source of this heartbreak, this pain, this turmoil, this strife is coming from. Some of you actively thought it was of your own doing. Now you're starting to see, wait, actually, no, this is this was more than just me. This was totally something new, totally something else. In some cases, it, wasn't, it had nothing to do with you at all. But as you realize this, this is giving you the ability to break free from that. But you have to choose to do so. And the devil can only ha have control over you if you continue to allow him to. So you really have to make that choice to break free. Eight of Swords is coupled with, yep, 
there it is the queen of swords the queen of swords is extreme is is discernment is like no no if ands or but buts about it the truth is the truth and that's all there is and we're not discussing it any longer it's like a it's a no bullshit energy it's like no no I see this for what it truly is and I'm not even going to try and rationalize a way out no it needs to stop we're cutting this now no if ands or buts about it and there will be there will be no discussion it is what it is that's a challenging energy although I do feel like most of you are really stepping up to the plate there but I will say yes this is a challenge but I feel like this is a good challenge to have and I feel like you're you're really taking it head on Excellent, Sag. Closing message or potential outcome. In the second half of your reading here, Saggy, we have, there you are again, temperance, greater balance, greater harmony, greater union within yourself, patience, understanding, alchemy, taking all the things that you learned and transforming them into, or I'm sorry, taking all of the experiences that you've had and transforming them into something beautiful and allowing them to transform yourself into something beautiful. Excellent, Sag. Temperance is coupled with the world. Beautiful. I mean, there it is. The ultimate completion right there. I love it when cards that came out in the pre-shuffle find their way back into the official reading. Like this is, this is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, Sagittarius. I am, I couldn't be more happy for you. Like I'm super, super proud of you guys because you really come a long way all right Ooh. hold on okay let's get your oracle guidance here for my sagimatazicals sun moon rising venus and jupiter for the month of february 2020 last shuffle all right here we go sag have it your guidance here is <clears throat> card number nine assessing so already the, the the what i'm picking up on here just from looking at the imagery of this card is you are you have your sights set on something or you're looking forward you're you're traveling towards whatever it is is new is come is that you're moving towards and this is an energy of also discernment coming through with the queen of swords in the second half of your reading the challenge in the second half of your reading it's like okay i know either i know what it, where it is i want to go or i know what i want to work towards so now it's just a matter of figuring out the best way to do so and i definitely feel like you're taking into account all of the things that you've learned from the past absolutely 100 percent. okay we have assessing it is time to assess your current position you must make sure your blind spots are revealed and that you are honest with others and yourself sometimes the hard decision is the best decision you should be able to assess and move quickly based on that assessment the quote here is i am enjoying moving and choosing moving and choosing and we all know how Sagis love to get moving <laughs> and keep moving. You have begun your journey and now it is time to assess where you are and what to do next. You have made a decision. You have worked and walked the path for some time and yet you understand that in every journey is it's a wise action to check the map. Sometimes we go along a pathway and we keep going even if it seems like the way is no longer the right way for us. Sometimes we feel we have gone too far to turn around and we settle on a journey and destination that doesn't really suit us or satisfy us. However, if we had just had some courage, we could have re reassessed as we went and perhaps ended up somewhere else, somewhere better. Now is the time to look carefully at all aspects of your life, especially the areas in which you have set some intentions or goals. Ask yourself, do I still want these things? Do I still want the same end result? If the answer is no, ask yourself what you can do to maintain momentum and head towards what you now desire. Although it doesn't seem terribly glamorous, assessment has a high payoff for us if we bother to do it well. Doing it well means we really look and look hard at how things are going. 
all of us have some kind of blind spot. So it's worth exposing this by consulting a trusted friend or finding where negative repeating patterns are and looking for the cause. Shining a light on a blind spot and taking action to shift it is one of life's biggest or one of life's big catalysts for change. Beautiful energy, Sag. I am so, so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. Like, congratulations. Good job. Please, please keep up the good hard work. Yeah? With that said, I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!